this is the carriage. I haven't used it for about six months or more. It's been sitting in the studio unused. And you'll see there's all the fibres. And there's, there'll also be oil as well. Now, you've got levers on... I'll get this in focus. You've got levers here. Where are we? There we go, these levers here. You've got moving parts, these levers here. And when you press the buttons on your carriage, you'll see them start to move. Right, let's see if I can... Yeah, this is quite heavy holding it. So you can see that one there. So what you want to do is you want all these parts, or see how they're all moving, all these parts, you need to clean them. First of all, what I recommend using is using dry cotton bud to get right in and underneath all the little areas. And see how there's a screw there and there's a lever there. This is all going to move. So... You get the cotton bud under, clean it, and then you press the corresponding button on the carriage to move that lever, and then you clean it again. So I'm just going to take the cotton bud, and I'm going to make sure that I get right in there. And Can you see how dirty that is? And there'll be a lot more where that came from. Now as you're knitting, knitting on the knitting machine, certain fibres, tend, certain yarn tends to shed more than others. So when you first, first get a knitting machine, if you're buying a second hand, knitting machine, the first thing you should do is give it an oil and a clean, especially if it's it's not been used and it's been sitting under a bed for a while. So you're just paying attention, so you're going under, oh, it's a huge bit there, see the bit? So this bit you're looking for there. And just do one side of the carriage at a time and concentrate on all those levers and moving parts. See, it's quite dirty. Um, my mum had a knit machine in the 70s. It's uh, Brother Jones 588 and it was a, it had push buttons, eight, eight push buttons on it. And I think it was maybe 1984, 1985, and I knitted two four-ply things. One was a cardigan and the other was a little vest top with lace on it. And after that, I swore I was never going to knit four-ply again. So I said to my mum, Mum, can I get that knitting machine out for you under the bed? And she said to me, it doesn't work, Gloria, it doesn't work. So I thought to myself, I'm going to get this working. I'd already read some knitting magazines because I was really interested in knitting machines and I thought, yeah, I'm going to get this working. So I had a magazine that had instructions on how to oil the machine. So that's what I did. So I oiled my mum's knitting machine, which she said didn't work. She said she literally couldn't couldn't move the carriage along and that's how she put it under her bed. So you just keep on going with this until basically your cotton buds are clean. So yeah, so I managed to get it working when I was 16 at the time and that's when I first started doing knitting on a knitting machine. 
and I was lucky enough to have my mum there to show me how to use it and as a child I always had machine knitted cardigans and jumpers especially school ones my mum would knit them for us for me and my brother so she still had some yarn there so I was very lucky that I had everything there but yeah I managed to get her machine working quite dirty so I was enjoying using that machine but I, I wanted to do more designs so what I did was I asked my parents if they would get me a punch card 24 stitch punch card knitting machine for my Christmas so they agreed that I could, they would get me one if I paid half the money so I ended up I got a brother 830. It was not well looked after, but good oil and it was good to go. The lady that was using it was forcing it with double knitting, hand knitting yarns and she wasn't taking care of it. It hadn't been oiled and looked after, I think. So we still go so three, four, five, six. So I've used about eight cotton buds so far. And I'm still going. Yeah, that's us in camera now. So that takes a few minutes, but it is, it is worth it. So the next stage, once, geez, next stage, once I've got all the fluff and the the dirty oil off of it once i've got that all off um i then i then use the cotton buds and i put some oil on the cotton buds this bit in the middle here this is a this knitting machine is a brother kh 881 and you'll see here it's got a little cam that goes up and down. So that also, that moves as the carriage it goes up and down. The buttons are not going to control where that goes. So we need to get right in there and make sure it's all clean. So once this is all clean, the next stage is to put a little bit of oil on the cotton buds. And then just dab oil on all the moving parts on the underside of the carriage and then when you've done that what you do is you take a bit of kitchen roll and you wipe off the excess the idea is that it's all oiled but there isn't loads of puddles you don't want to see puddles of, of oil right that's looking a lot better Right, we'll turn this over. You can press them out together at the same time. Right, so these are the, the top levers. Right, so that's the top ones. There's still fluff coming off of it. But yeah, you just keep on going. It's amazing how much gets trapped in it. But yes, I see some some sheds. Sorry about that. I'm knocking the camera. Some yarn sheds more than others. They're quite fa oh, there's a lot in this bit. Some are like quite fibrous. Press the middle button and they'll spring back. Now I'm going to press two slip buttons. And you'll see the levers corresponding to that in a second. Just wait until the camera steadies. There we go. That's this one here. a lot better but yeah I can still see bits so it's just a case of 
keeping going. You'll see like the, that bit is glistening there. That's old oil, so I want to wipe that off. So you're looking for any bits that may have old oil on it. And also think the the needles, the way the machine works, is when you're pulling your carriage across, the needles are going to go through and follow. They're going to follow a route depending on what levers you you've selected there. So there's, I'll bring this over here. So when it's done its patterning, it's still going to come through here. And that's a moving bit. This bit here isn't a moving bit, but the needle, the needle butt is still going to go along here. So you still want to clean those bits as well. So you just need to think about anything that's, that's going to be metal touching metal. Right. What you can do is if you're finding that you can't get a bit out, what you can do is use use a pair of tweezers or pliers or something. Pair of tweezers. Try again. There we go. We've got that. It's just a little bit. Now, there's also white plastic bits of the carriage. Now, the rails, I'll tilt this. The rails, oh, see how dirty that is? That's a dark yellow colour. That's dried on oil, and you really need to get that off. So if you look at the, the ridge there along the top, the that's going to go along the rail, the top rail of the knitting machine. And so that that part will come in contact with your the needle with this bit comes in contact with the needle but see how it's dirty under here. So you're still getting the oil coming to these bits, even though you're not going to oil them. They will eventually come into contact with the oil. So this is the bit here. This is where the rail, which is behind your needles, goes. So that goes along this bit. So again, that's going to... Oh dear, that's really dirty. So you're, you're going to get... In contact there. Right, see how? So we still have to do this bit as well. But yeah, it does take quite a lot of cotton buds. And I actually cleaned this, oiled and cleaned this just before Christmas. And I only knitted a few hats. But it still managed to get itself quite filthy. Right. These little orange pegs here, the sinker gates. Now, most of the time they're not going to be used. But certain times they are. So I'm just going to push this in here and try and move it to get in. And the other one's in the same bit of oil as well. So it's looking a lot better now. There's still a few bits I can see. So this bit, this bit here is dried in. So I really need to, that's a really important bit to get off. So yeah, all the metal bits, you're looking for bits of fluff, bits of dried oil. Right. 
I'm giving this qu quite a thorough clean just now. Um, I just recommend when if you're doing your, your knitting, when you're going from like a light colour to dark colour, if you have a light colour jumper and then you're going to go to light, vice, vice versa. I recommend that you take the machine should come with a brush similar to this that you take your brush along and brush it off because you'll find that you you get tiny fibers and if you've got quite a high contrast in your yarn from one garment to another you don't want those fibers getting mixed So more cotton buds. Let's see if I can get this in view. Again, right. Let's see. Can you see that this? It's a bit awkward because I've got it quite close, so that you can see what I'm doing. Right. Can you see this bit here? Now. That's going to go along the edge of your the edge of your bed, of your of your needle bed. So again, that's metal to metal. So again, this is a bit that will have to be oiled and cleaned. Sometimes this bit can get quite dirty. If you don't oil, oil there, what happens is if you don't oil this bit here, the two bits of metal constantly rubbing your knitting, over time it'll actually wear away and scratch the metal. So again, that's a place, that's an area that's it's very important to oil. Right, let's see. So I'm just going to have a quick check and see. Even though this area that I'm doing just now is just, it's just got a screw in it, it's still, it's all dirty in there. So I want to give it the best, best clean that I can. As I say, I'm giving it quite a thorough, a thorough clean as well. So this area here is me. This is going to be metal to metal as well. And you can see over time, actually, let's see if I hold it up. You can see there's little scratches. That's when it's it's not been oils, oiled enough. It can dry over time. That's another part that's very, very important just to have a little slither of oil there. Right, let's see how that's looking. That's a lot better. Right, so I'm going to press MC. Let's move to another levers. So yeah, you can see I'm starting here. But yeah, I've usually used 20 cotton buds. As I say, it's worth doing. You'll actually hear the difference and you'll feel the difference when you're knitting. You should be able to take your carriage across your knitting machine literally with one finger just pushing it. There shouldn't be any grating or any resistance whatsoever. Cotton bud, I think that'll be us. There we go. It's even dirt inside there as well. Jeez. Look at that. 
that was oh, see in there like that came from there so although although it's not per se a moving part you can see there is moving parts inside so if you just leave that to mount, mount up over time it could affect that spring in there so it's always, it's always worth having a look and seeing okay, so it's worth getting that out now another thing while you've got your cartridge here uh, so if you look at this section, you've got brushes. Sometimes yarn and fibre can get stuck under these brushes. So just have a look and see if you can see any fibres. That's looking okay. Oops, sorry. What you can do is you can unscrew these to check. Because sometimes if your brushes, your brushes should move like that they should move freely they shouldn't be stiff at all they should all move if you find that your brushes are stiff and you're not able to spin them it means that there's dust and fiber so you just unscrew take your fiber off and replace it back on oh right i can see here looking in the camera that that has got it's got some dust and stuff in it. Right, it's that one. Still getting used to doing videos. So I'm actually just using a wee tool. This is actually one of the rubber tools. You can use one of your latch tools and take that off. Just move the other one. Let's camera magnifies it. Yeah, I think that looks okay. So what I'm going to do is just give this a, a wipe over the kitchen roll as well, especially the plastic bits. And here's it. any excess dirty. Oh. See, you don't think it's dirty until you start, you start rubbing and then you find that oil on all these nooks and crannies. Right, so I'll just undo this and just leave it. Now, for your oil, usually that machine will come with a little bottle of oil if it doesn't um, i'm using Janome sewing machine oil you can at push you can use baby oil right let's get this in camera right so i just want a little bit at the end That's it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab on the levers and the moving parts. And I'm just going to go along and dab and I'm just going to put it underneath. And you'll actually, you'll find when you're doing this, you there will be even more dirt will come off. I'm just paying particular attention to the levers that I know is going to move. So you can see there, there's still, there's still fibre and there's still dirt to come off. So I'll just continue along. Putting oil where I know the needle butts are going to be in contact. And any little moving bits. And you don't need a lot of oil, it's a little bit of oil. But 
Yeah, I've paid particular attention to the moving parts. There's a spring under there. Right, so you can see there, even though I've cleaned it, you're still going to get even more. I'm just going to keep on going. Pay particular attention to that little a lever that goes there in a spring. Then you've got the moving part here. So you need to bring that along so that you're getting both sides. Just pay attention to the levers. And it's, it's okay to move them a bit. As long as you're not forceful. So you can see here, there's still quite a bit to come off. Right, so I'm going to get another couple. And you see, I'm only putting a little bit. I'm not putting too much because I don't, I don't want any puzzles. Foil. I'm basically just going into all the moving parts, the parts where the needle, needles, needle butts will go along. Yeah, still getting, still getting fibres and dust coming off. Like this. Right. Can you see here, you've got a bit of metal and it curves down like that. Again, you're going to get metal to metal on that bit, so it's worth doing, it's worth going over that bit. Oh. Now let's compare this bit. Right. It's dirty under there. Now this one, you compare the other one, it moves really slowly. So that is definitely, it's needing oil in there. And that moves this bit here. So I'm going to give this more oil. You get to know your machine and what parts move. See how that's going to be? That's metal to metal. So again, this area's got to be clean and oiled. And that'll fix that bit up there. Right. So it's looking a lot better now. So what I'm going to do is take clean cotton bud and those areas that have oiled, especially the top bits, I'm just going to go like that and I'm going to smooth the oil out, I'm going to spread the oil out so that I don't get any blobs of oil. You'll see there's still more dirt coming off. It's quite amazing. You think you look at it and think oh, that's not that dirty. So you start actually cleaning it. But yeah, the the oil cleans it even more. Any oil, jeez, any oil that's been there and dried up. Gonna start coming off because you've because of the moisture of the new oil. Right, I 
I don't know if you can see it. I can see it, it's glistening now, but I don't have any blobs left. Right, so the next thing is for the non-moving, non-moving parts, like the rails, etc. Plenty of oil for this this time. Now, if you've got the bottle of oil that comes with the knitting machine, I'm just going to do this here. Right here. Let's give it a little oil. Um, the bottle that actually comes with the knitting machine, it's got a little brush at the end, so that's a lot easier to use. So you can actually just take your little bottle and go like that. Right. So I'll just turn this around so you can see it. So as I said, this bit here, a little bit of oil because it's going to cause friction against the metal bed if you don't do it. But I can see there's a few scratch marks on mine. But I got this machine 1990, so it's pretty old, but it's still good. As long as you look after them, they'll last for years. And there's knit machines that were out in the 60s and 70s and they're, they're still going. Right, that's looking so much better now. Hi, that's me back again. So I'm going to show you where you need to wipe the, the dirty oil and fibre off. So this bit here is where the carriage is going to run along, remember? I said it was going to come in contact with that. So with the dry kitchen roll, you want to wipe that bit. You also want to give the, the needle butts, you want to give them a wipe as well. And then paying attention to this area as well. So generally, I just give it a wipe in the one direction. And you can bring your needles forward a little bit as well. Just bring it back forward. And you can see. So I'll continue doing that all the way along. See how dirty it is. So see this is this has been sitting in my studio for just over six months now. Let's go along and wipe, wipe it off. And you just keep wiping along there. And you'll see this little bits of oil and dirt coming off. And when you've done that, got the oil off, the next stage is to get any fibre off. And you use your brush and your knitting machine will come, come with a ruler like this. And you use this to bring your needles back and forward. So what I'm going to do as I'm going to bring those needles forward all the way and I'm just going to brush along and I'm just going to brush along and that gets any loose, loose fibre so you do that all the way along and you, this part here where the belt goes you can also re often get fibre in there as well right so this this bit in here where your, your stitch ruler is and your needles you use the brush 
and you do a sweeping movement out the way like that and you do that all the way along and you pay attention I'll just move this out a bit pay attention to the end of your needles as well and make sure all the latches open and close okay and at this stage you can look and you can see if you've got any broken or bent latches now they should all close properly I think they're looking okay maybe that one that one's not quite right I'll probably replace that right I'll just adjust the camera again there we go okay so we're going to put I'm going to put these back in place back at the edge and the next part is to oil so what this is mine on here on the cloth and just rub it in and just wrap it around the finger and the raised bit here I go along and I do that and also the needle butts I go at the side, the top and the back and it's important to do them and you will find after this that the machine knits a lot smoother and it's also it's a lot quieter as well Look at the Dutch. Right. Get another kitchen. See, so you look at it and you think it's not that dirty until you start putting oil on it to clean it. Um, if you've got the little brush, the little bottle of oil that comes with the brush, what you would do is you would dab that like that every couple of inches along, and then you take your kitchen roll and you would wipe it like that. And again, you you don't want you don't don't want um, you don't want big drops of oil. So as you can see, more. And I'll just do the end here. I'll be back in a second. Now, if you've got a second hand knitting machine. Um, as I said, it's a good idea to check all your needles and make sure the latch closes properly. You'll often find if there's any broken needles or bent needles that they're actually at the very end of the bed of your, the knitting machine. Most garments don't take the full 200 needles. So usually what we do is if we get a broken needle, we put it at the far end of the machine and replace it with one of those needles. But you can see there how much dirt's coming off of that. So I'm just going to give it just a little bit more just to make sure. And I'm paying particular attention to the needle box. in the back and then what will happen is when I take the carriage across a few times for the first time all that oil will move into the different parts and there's a little bit of dirt there so I'm just going to take that out let's have a look and see so that's that's looking a lot better now looking a lot better right let's do the test I should be able to push that along with my pinky And you will hear it. I'll, I'll turn, I'll switch it off. You'll... And actually, I can just go like that. It just slides on its own. What I'll do is I'll put some needles in a working position 
and you'll hear, you'll hear how quiet it is now. And that's the sound you're looking for after your machine has been oiled. Depending on what machine you have, you may have a belt like this which controls the programming of your punch card machine. This one's a brother machine. So it's they're, so they're called timing belts and you see they've got little prongs here. So what you need to do is actually engage your, long, engage your timing belt by putting your carriage to KC. And then if you listen, you'll hear it engage. That's engaging. You see this bell actually moves along. Now this wheel is another part that, that needs oiled and cleaned. So the reason I've engaged it is because I can then get in contact with all of the little pins that, that come out. So I've already got some oil on this cotton bud. So I'm just going to... Give them a little bit of oil in this area as well. Right, and I'm now just going to do the other side as well. And you'll see here how dirty they were. So it's definitely worth doing that part as well.